welcome to the lecture on how to overcome type 1 error and type 2 error in statistics. In the previous lecture, we discussed in detail about type 1 error and type 2 error. If we recall that you again, assume that we have misclassified a sample into rejection region. So we come into conclusion that null hypothesis is rejected or significant difference positive or significant difference is there but this conclusion is wrong so it is type 1 error and the other possibility is we have classified a sample value as not significantly different so not significant so null hypothesis cannot rejected but this conclusion is wrong so this is type 2 error in order to overcome type 1 error, what can we do? I told you this rejection value of 5%, 1% or whatever the rejection value is decided by the researcher. If I recall you again, so in now what is null distribution? Null distribution, we know that we are plotting this rejection region. Please go and watch my lecture on uh, null hypothesis and null distribution and p-value. This is the normal distribution of sample means. So all these, even the values in the tail region, even in the values in the tail region are normal values. But if we pick another value and if it is somewhere here, the probability of being normal is this much. So very less probability is there to become those samples as not significant. So that's why if something is in the rejection region, we are coming to conclusion that the probability of being not significant is less. So that's why we are coming into conclusion that they are significant different. In the 5% rejection region, assume that we are getting many samples with type 1 error. We are coming into conclusion that they are significant difference, but by looking at or in, in general, they are not significantly different. We are comparing type 1 diabetes versus type 2 diabetes. So, a clinical manifestation is not significantly different. But, but in statistical testing, the result is significantly different. But actually, by looking at that, it is not significantly different. So, in order to minimize that, what you can do is, you have to change this cutoff value to somewhere here. So, you can push the rejection region towards the tail. There's no other way you can minimize the type 1 error. And many people think that you can minimize type 1 error by increasing the sample size. No, you can only minimize the type 2 error by increasing sample size. How can you do that? If you can recall, what will happen to the sampling distribution when you increase the sample size? I discussed these things in my previous lectures. So please go and watch my lecture on sampling distribution. If you get a sampling distribution for the samples where the sample size is 25, assume that it is something like this. If your n is 5 and you are taking multiple samples, the distribution is something like that because of low sample size. But what will happen if you increase that to 100? This will be something like this. If you increase further, n into 1000, this will be more closer and the standard error will be less when you increase the sample size. This property, we can use this property to minimize type 2 error. How? Okay, now assume that this is something with n equals 25 and this is the rejection region. You increase your sample size into 100. So n is 100. What will happen? In the same scale, the standard error will be less. So the sampling distribution will be narrow. With test will be something like this. Okay, assume that our rejection region is 5%. Now we know that in this dark color area, when n is equal to 25, only 5% 5 is in this region. 5% of the sample means are there in this region. But you know that this is n equals 100 and we are talking about sample means. In the blue color, when sample size is 100, we know that majority is towards center. So only few are there in the tails. So what will happen to the 5%? If 
we are keeping the 5% rejection region to take 5% of the sample. So this level will be shifted to towards the mid part of the distribution somewhere here. So the new rejection region will be something like this. So the new rejection region will be something like this. So you can identify that initial rejection region somewhere here was shifted to somewhere here and this also shifted to somewhere here. Now what is type 2 error? Type 2 error is classifying a sample mean towards null region but that's actually significant. So if your sample mean from the other the testing population is somewhere here initial. If it is somewhere here or the place is somewhere here, in the initial categorization that the decision will be the null hypothesis is not rejected. But if this is actually different one, actually different one, what will happen when we increase the sample size? Now our rejection region is somewhere here because of the high sample size. Now the conclusion is the null hypothesis is rejected. So you can minimize the type 2 error by increase in the sample size. So keep in mind type 1 error you have to change the rejection region type 2 error you have to increase the sample size in order to minimize the errors. Thank you very much.